Hello, hello, hello. How the devil are you? Welcome, welcome to Dragoncast uh, episode 13. If you kind of ignore the bonus episodes that we kind of decided to do, but then it's very complicated. We'll get it right for when season two of Ask the Dragon starts. But it's me, Jamie East, your host, along with my co-host, the wonderful uh, Chris Mandel. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. How's your week been? What have you been, been doing? It's been good. Well, I've been coughing most of the week because I had a really bad cough on last week's uh, recording. Oh, and yeah. I was trying very hard not to cough on on the podcast. So if, if people thought I sounded a bit wheezy and lightheaded last week, uh, you're right. And I suppressed it as much as I could. So I spent most of this week just coughing. And now, touch wood, it's sort of gone. Um, and I'm afraid to say that is the only interesting thing that has happened to me since last week's episode. You need those weeks to make the other ones count, don't you? I think post House of the Dragon, I think everything is calming down. I think it's a lot less manic. And yeah, so it's it's all good. And what's your what's your week been like? What have I what have I been doing this week? I not much really. I've, I changed my setup a bit. If you're watching mm. on YouTube, uh, you'll notice new camera, new team, new dream, all of that. Uh, in the background, you can see my gorillas uh, car alight. Thank you very much, Paddy. That's Paddy's fault that I own that. Um, <laughs> long story. I got a new camera um, and a couple of new lights uh, in the studio. But then within an hour of them arriving, Everything in my studio was unplugged and yeah. I got obsessed. I ended up watching YouTube tutorials on cable management, which was just like, I, I just went too far. I've got so many Vel Velcro kind of like cable ties underneath this desk. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's, 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 it's holding the whole thing together. So that took like most of my week and obviously lots of podcasting, lots of Smart 7. Interestingly, some people have discovered the Smart 7 off the back of Dragoncast, which has been quite oh. interesting. It's usually the other way around, but it um, yeah. shows the mighty power of Dragoncast. So Indeed. the Smart 7 is the news podcast that I do every single day um, at 7am. Apart from that, not much telly. No. I like The Jungle, so I watched The Jungle last night. Okay. I'm a big fan of The Jungle. Matt like Hancock. Um, it's not in yet, but yes. Oh. I, I've never... I fully predict the entire nation is going to hate vote that despicable prick uh and quite rightly so into every single task yeah. possible and and sort of i mean i haven't watched it for years but like keep him in right like because it's not like big brother where it's a popularity contest it's actually yeah, better yeah. keep him in make him sweat make him suffer hopefully there'll be some like bush tucker trials where it's just like nans in a care home or something like that that he has to kind of relive his you know relive his yeah. horror uh, face to face um aside from that I started watching, uh, interestingly, because we we were discussing before we come on air how we're both desperate to watch The Americans, but we're saving it for yeah. the podcast. We'll talk about that in a bit. But I'd run out of things to watch, or rather I'd run out of enthusiasm for whatever it was I was watching anyway. Couldn't finish Industry. Uh, we'll talk about that. No. I'm sure you have opinions on that. Um, yeah. but, but so I actually started to watch Only Murders in the Building. Have you watched that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I, we got onto it really late. Uh, so we watched season one like a couple of months ago. Fucking brilliant. Like, yeah, it's, it's just actually charming. Really, really easy to watch. Just charming, so charming. nice and gentle. Yeah. And just the perfect length of episodes as well. I'm really, I'm a real big fan of these American kind of, a bit like Shit's Creek was only like 22 30 minutes, minutes long yeah. max. This is a big problem in the streaming era is no one has the... Um, tenacity to do a 30 minute episode anymore and I think like when we sit down we're like look we can't do two one hour shows in an evening right once we both get in once we've had our dinner once we've had dinner exactly once we've done the washing up you know need yeah. half an hour and an hour that's the structure we like in the, the Mandel household and it's hard only murders went down a treat for that reason other reason yeah. other thing fit in that mould is the bear uh, which is on Disney yes. Plus oh I'm not as I'm not I'm not like really obsessed with it because when it came out in the States, everyone went bananas for it. Are you one of them? I am a little bit whereby if like everyone's telling me something's amazing, I'll be yeah. like, I, I shall be the fucking judge of that. Thank you. Very well, much. I think it's yeah. yeah, I think it's really interesting. I think there's a, a, a real zeitgeist with a lot of shows. And I think if you're late, you miss the anticipate. You, you miss the um the show unfolding in front of your eyes. So like what I get is everyone's told me this is the best show of the year and I watch it yeah. and I'm like, 
it's trying quite hard to be the best show of the year and that puts me off there's no discovery there's no discovery I, is there anymore? i'm enjoying it we just didn't yeah so there's it's like eight episodes i think uh, and they're half an hour long it's set in a, a sort have of you got fairly... to the end have you not finished it yet Are you... no we were going to watch the seventh episode last night which is apparently the one that is all done in one take um you see i watched that and, and did not notice that at all oh really <laughs> Well, which, I, which must be which would be heartbreaking to the cinematographer i'm sure but like i watched it and then read about it i was like was that only one take no. I, I did not <laughs> did not even like cross my mind well, we were gonna watch it and we just decided we were way too stressed well, not too stressed but it would be way too stressful to watch it's a very a stressy night. episode so instead we watched an episode of the sopranos which was incredibly stressful but i don't know that's that's my comfort view can't say that well, linking um sopranos I, I started the white lotus uh season yeah. two is, yeah. is out as well on sky atlantic hbo fantastic the, annoyingly um i think i must have come to the white lotus late for season one because they were all there and i just binged through them and delighted in it over a period of like two nights or something like that it's a weekly one which yeah they're doing a week feels drop. kind of cruel after house of the dragon it really does but very very different kind of show it's 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 borderline art house, I think. It's like an art house mis- who done it, I, I, mm. but but done in a really nice way. And the casting, you know, after last season, I won't give any spoilers away. There was there was there had to be some major recasting. Like we said, we've discussed before. It's very clever how they've done it. The White Lotus Resort is just this time. It's in Sicily. Um, uh, Jennifer Coolidge is the only returning cast member back, but the casting is just so good. Aubrey Plaza, brilliant, so so good. And there is a, there's a proper in episode one. You'll know what I mean when you watch it. The dude who played um, the fella in Time Traveler's wife, Theo James, is in it. Theo James, Theo James yeah. yeah, who was who was pretty bland in the Time Traveler's wife, uh, but plays quite a horrible shit in uh the white lotus there's a great moment in episode one that involves what must be must be a prosthetic penis i have it we, must yeah be. so i've not seen season two of the white lotus yet and i already oh, but you just happened to catch that bit did you i just yeah the algorithm just thought yeah i've already yeah. seen the pictures i mean yeah gotta be prosthetic right i think it i, I think it must be i mean it used to be that like it would be, I would say, if that was real, <laughs> e- an easy footer. It's the size of one of those. In cold, like, in, in inclement weather as well, you know. It's the size of one of those like, gummy snakes you get in pick and mix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just reminded me of Requiem for a Dream. The um, thing is, it, it, the thing is, right, like, I'm going to go really tinfoil hat here. And I do think, obviously, it's probably, probably fake. But the kind of, the way to get attention for men in shows now is to get your dick out i think yeah like because it's kind of the it's the 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 last taboo kind of alfie allen i think broke that taboo quite on thrones thrones didn't he 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 loved getting his old tackle out in the old i'm also right in thinking um because i sort of oh also there was so who got their dick out on succession someone oh roman had a dick pic on succession do you remember that was it. Oh my god! Yeah. How did we forget the dick pic? Um, oh, that's great. But I think, I I think the rule is on television, you're allowed to show a penis if it's flaccid, but not if it's hard. That's I think the the thing you can hard it. it there's an does intent. that feel old fashioned or or okay? I think knowing how long it takes to film episodes and get shots, I think as- asking, no for, a, asking yeah. <laughs> for a penis to stay hard for a half a day would be too big. Even too in big these days of Viagra, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think that's right. I think that's that's the sort of, um, that's why you see a flash of, uh, I can't believe we're talking about this. Just a little flash of a bell end. Yeah, but you, you can't show an erect penis. Hang on a sec. This just said, like, just intro. Uh, we've already done 15 minutes, mainly about dicks. This yeah. is what happens. Um, coming up, we've not even told people who we've got on this on this episode. It's very, oh very exciting. God, uh, yeah. Chris and I, um, earlier on, no, late last week, recorded an interview with Sir Harold Westling himself, Mr. Graham McTavish. And he was fantastic. He was slightly intimidating at first, uh, yeah. as we as we mentioned. Uh, but he really 
he was like a little lovey, wasn't he? He was. He was. Lovey. He was quite, quite sort of. He's just, just quite a strapping man, isn't he? He's just. I think he's great. Uh, I didn't say that to him on the interview. I was very professional. No, you didn't. You didn't. You, he's a hunky, a hunky Scottish man. I just love it. But didn't? Did you not think this? I wouldn't have said this on the call. He's a lot more Scottish on House of the Dragon. Yeah, I, when when we were talking about him, he was talking about. Uh, he mentioned something about Edinburgh. You'll hear it in a minute. Um, and I was like, "Wait, is he is he an Englishman playing a Scotsman? Yeah, or is he a Scotsman now playing an Englishman?" I pulled up his Wikipedia during the recording to check, and he is <laughs> Scottish, but he's just got a sort of lovely, you know, theatre voice. Right, we're not going to give any more details about that away. That's coming up uh, very very shortly. Um, we are also going to talk about us kickstarting the Americans as well. Uh, we, we're trying to work out how to do that. We didn't quite realise how many episodes there were of the Americans. Yeah. There are seventy-five episodes. Uh, this is not the bear, for goodness' sake. We've we've gone at the deep end, so we're not going to do an episode a week because, well, we It'd would still be here a year and a half. Nearly. We wouldn't even get it done in time for House of the Dragon season <laughs> two. Um, but first, let's pick up on any bits of House of the Dragon news. Pretty thin on the ground, I have to say, Chris. Everyone's kind of like hunkered yeah. down, hibernating, getting ready for Christmas. Um, Graham gives us a few tidbits about uh, where things are in, in the interview, which is coming up in a bit. But a couple of interesting things that I wanted to mention to you, Chris. And I don't know if you've if you've noticed these. Um, there's some really good pics of uh, of um, uh, the 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 season finale dragon fight and it was one of the few times that they used volume technology now you, do you know what i what i mean when i say volume this is, technology is this this the the 360 the, screen the big wraparound yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so we i spoke to miguel and ryan the premier of house of the dragon because there was a whole thing are oh, they using volume technology and actually they went yeah we did but not not that much it's it's not as great as you know it's not the savior of um cgi that everyone made out you know when mandalorian came out it was like oh my god they filmed the whole thing in this yeah. studio and the, and miguel went quite geeky and beautifully geeky about say telling me why you couldn't do it as much because you you had no depth of field you yeah. you have you have all this you had the width around you um of this big this big high definition plasma screen, whatever it is, but you've got no depth. So you can't move forward or backwards. You can only move sideways or, or which was, yeah. which I thought was kind of interesting, but in season in, in the episode, uh, in the, the fight between Aegon and Luke, uh, they did use it. And there are some fantastic picks, which I'm going to put up on screen. Now, if you're looking at it in, um, in, uh, uh, watching this in, in, um, on YouTube, you'll see these up now. And they're just some really cool, uh, some pics there of them doing it. Chris, I'm going to, let me stick these in WhatsApp for you. So you, we oh, you open up the chat bit. Hold on. Yeah. Put it in chat. Um, interestingly though, about uh, that technology, I noticed it was, I'm fairly sure I'm 90% sure it was used in episode nine, uh, when Amond and Sir Kristen Cole find Aegon in that sort of, um, that chapel. Oh, that nine. would make sense, wouldn't it? Because if you look, the way that they chase him around that room, they they never sort of get towards the door. Like the door has a sort of flatness to it, and it's a huge room. You know, they tend to use this yeah. technology a lot when they need it, the grandness and scale that they can't get on the set. So I'm fairly sure okay. that that is done because you see, it's almost yeah, there is an almost flatness to it. I mean, it's it's how you can reproduce the scale of something like that without shooting there, but. It's very famous for well, the Mandalorian, isn't it? That was the the show that. that yeah, of... that was the big one. They used it in all of. The, I think they probably invented it um, for for that show. It, yeah, because they could Hawaii go to then. all these different like alien planets essentially without. Yeah. Having to. And it does it. I mean, it, it clearly speeds up uh, the process, um, which is why they churned out so much from, from Star Wars. I think. Um, so yeah, there's some pics, some great pics there oh, of them wow. on the gimbals on the kind of hobby horse, but beautifully kind of like choreographed uh, colored and and just like i love it's like you know in your heart of hearts that luke is not flying 150 feet in the air in a thunderstorm but to see basically a guy like holding a hose <laughs> just like spraying <laughs> him with water is just like it's always just like brilliant it's like and it's all that's crazy. missing is like a guy with a wobble board like for the for the thunder <laughs> it's great it's up on screen now it's um, really really and, stunning really stunning and funny should mention about about the use of 
the volume thing because it's th the other thing that I picked up on as well, and I'll put these on screen and I'll put a link in the show notes as well, is that um, there have been some thumbnails found from what was originally intended to be the final scene of season one. So we now know it as being one of the greatest scenes ever. And, and this mm. is one of those beautiful, happy accidents um, of, you know, the one the one track shot of Matt Smith walking, of, 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 of Damon walking in with his back to the camera, never turning around. And then, of course, Rhaenyra turns around with that look of fury in her face. Originally, um, that was supposed to be... Um, them, that was supposed to take place in the throne room of Dragonstone but they hadn't built it in time or they didn't build it, right, I guess, which is right. weird because, because A, they could have, surely they're going to need to build that at some point. B, why couldn't they have used that volume tech there? Maybe, maybe it didn't, it didn't oh, work. See, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me put this in the chat for you as well. Because This is uh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Because, because yeah, Rhaenyra doesn't have a throne yet because in that episode, that is the episode where she decides I am going to make a claim. So it's a bit like get the papier mache out, right? Like we need, we need a war table. We yeah. need a, we need a throne, but yeah, that was, um, and so they went for this other thing at the war table in that w room where they go towards the yeah. fireplace and, and turn around. And actually it was where, and if you look at the, tra there was the trailer for, um, uh, in the trailer, we saw Cyrax coming out of the, of the dark and just that, that shot of him. Oh uh, yes. Yeah. which was never used never used in an episode that was going to be the final ever shot yes. in season 1 um so it was going to go uh so it, it takes place in the throne room um the 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 thumbnails of this uh Rhaenyra sat on the throne she composes herself looks to Damon Damon looks down back at her then Rhaenyra then Rhaenyra looks at the camera in that same shot that I think of the same style shot that we saw, yeah, yeah. but then the final shot was was like showing the the similarities between you know the connection between Dragon and and Master was that Cyrax uh, was going to come that shot that we saw in the trailer come out of the dark and roar into mm. blackness, which would have been oh okay, like the, the Dragon has been awoken now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Interesting, and then um, instead they used that to have sort of have Cyrax was sort of in there when Rhaenyra was going into labour. Is that the sort of... Do you, That's you mean? right, yeah. The same They, they used that same connection thing, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and then there was there was another piece as well, which was that um, I'm going to... I feel stupid for never having seen this before. And I think I'm going to say this to you and show this to you. And you're going to go, well, yeah, of course. Everyone knew that. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. hang on a second. Let me just... So if you're listening at home, and you're not watching on YouTube, just type in to Google House of the Dragon, click on images, and the first image that comes up is the image used in IMDB, which is the, uh, like, just one of the posters, yeah. If you click on that, have you clicked on that, Chris? Oh, I thought you were going to send me a link, sorry. Uh, I'll send you the link, hold on, all right. Mr. The all right, Mr. Lazy Pants, hold on, <laughs> I'll send you the link. Lady Muck uh, over here. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Here's the link. Now, I hope that I'm not going to be made to look stupid and go, Jamie, you're the last person on earth to see this. So the first, so, the IMDb, so it's it's Rhaenyra and Alison yeah, top left. stood in front yeah. of the... Click that. Do you, do you notice anything in that? Does anything jump out at you? Well, my mind is instantly saying that the eye of the dragon has the cat's paw dagger. Oh, piss off. You knew it anyway. I did know. I swear I did. Better. I swear I did. I swear I did. You did know that, didn't you? No. I've never. Did you know that? Yeah. No, I did not. I did I've not. never noticed that before. Either. I've never the noticed pupil. it before. I've never noticed it. Before. Yeah, the pupil on the the original kind of uh, uh, That's poster. Great. That's really good. Is is the cat's paw dagger? I never ever noticed that. Uh, it's really clever I because the um, prophecy and the the sort of threat is what divides these women. Uh, yeah. Not only the existence of it, but who it refers to, they both have an egg on. Um, that's really clever. I, I cannot really, believe they have had that in front of us all this time. I'd love to I'd love to interview who made that poster. Should we try and find out? Should we speak I wouldn't, to yeah. I'd like really like to speak to the person who did the intro. Oh yeah. 
And there's yeah, really trying, good, I mean, we were talking about it a lot week to week, but there are people that are show on Twitter that will show you like, oh, here's what was new that week. Here's what's new that week. I think it's a very confusing intro, but I think... I do, I, it is. Well, hang on a sec. Well, well, let's, let's not say that in case we do get them on. They might listen. In case they're listening. I think we it's a love, fantastic it's intro. probably it's better than beautiful. the original. <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably the best intro that's actually ever been designed no but Not i think conf- confusing is fine you know, listen we're all we've all got short attention spans in this day and age um yeah. but yeah it's very complex and there's a lot it'll only get more there's always there's going to be more and more every every season and every episode there'll be development so yeah what's going to happen yeah because well let's not even as, think about it right we, you know as, what we yeah. are we are <clears throat> 100% waffling on now. Oh, uh, let's get to the good stuff, shall we? Yeah. Um, okay, we'll be back with you in about 25 minutes time for a bit more chat and we'll talk about the Americans and, and whatnot after that. But first, uh, here's Chris and I uh, when we sat down with Sir Harold Westerling himself, Mr. Graham McTavish on Dragoncast. Tell you what, Chris, when Graham popped up on the screen then, did you just sit yeah. a bit straighter? It's of, because like, Graham's got so such a, it's the angle is so flattering. It makes him look seven foot tall. And I suddenly felt like very small I and mean, emasculated. Graham, you look hard as nails in House of the Dragon. You look, you look like you're built like a brick shit house. I have to say, you look yes, incredible. Yes, he's a formidable shit. individual, Sir Howard Weston. <laughs> I mean, all he's doing when he's not guarding the king is, is press ups and, <laughs> and, you know, bench pressing, you know, other members of the court. <laughs> That's that, that's how he passes his time. I've, I've decided that Harold doesn't actually sleep either. Um, well, they they have very they're on flexi time for sure, right? They 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 are just at the beck and call, right? Oh, completely. No, no, no. I mean, well, as you probably noticed, I never sat down throughout <laughs> the entire series, uh, and and this I this only dawned on me. I remember when we went into the small council chamber for the first time. Uh, you know, we all arrived, and I'm on the small council, Sir Harold. And uh, I looked around, and um, there was one chair missing. And uh, I said to the director at the time, I can't remember which one it was, I said, uh, I'm so sorry, where, where's Harold's chair? He said, oh, no, no, Harold doesn't have a chair, he stands. I said, what, <laughs> what, like, always? Yes. <laughs> well, can't can right. sit down, he occasionally <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and no, no, I was never allowed to sit down. And so I don't wow. think he actually has a bed. I think but is that like just, a, is that like a rule of the of the of the king's guard then I presume? Because yeah, I think he just I, goes into his room and just leans yeah. against the wall <laughs> and quietly cries himself to sleep. A bit like cows when like so people creep up at night and just push you over like like they do like people yeah. do in the provinces with cows. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yes, uh, yes. Sorry, we're, we've not Please even intro- introduced ourselves. Welcome, Graham. Welcome to yeah, welcome to Dragon. Welcome to Dragoncast. I'm Jamie, and this is Chris, who might keep dropping out because his internet connection takes away the picture every now and then, but he yeah. is still here. Um, how, how are you doing? Whereabouts are you? You're in you're in LA. You're in LA, right? No, no I'm in London. Oh, you're back in, in London. London. Lovely stuff. Back in London. Yes. And talk, talk to us. We were just chatting before before you joined us about about what we wanted to know. And before we get on to um, uh, the intricacies of, uh, of 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 Sir Westerly, um, what's it like as 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 Graham uh, McTavish at the moment? In between seasons, we're 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 kind of like presuming uh, we're presuming that even though you've quit and flounced off in a huff. Uh, that, that, off. The the, uh, the 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 cape is just being dry cleaned and 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 we'll be we'll be we'll be coming back to you one day. What's it like in between? What's it like in between seasons for a, for a, for a principal cast uh, member? Yeah, well, uh, do you have do you have do you have enough time to go and like do other jobs? Are you, um, are you limited to what you're allowed to do? How does that work? No, uh, I, I, yes, I do have time. Um, I've been doing other things and, uh, I, yeah, it's, they're, they're actually really good, uh, nowadays, um, uh, these, these guys about, about that sort of thing. They understand, um, that, you know, Hey, you, you like, you like to act. So, um, you like yeah. to work. So that's what I enjoy. I get very fidgety if I'm not working, I get very sort of frustrated um i'm i'm writing at the moment as well i'm writing another book with sam hewan about oh, wow. uh, our what's trip that, to new zealand um, it's like a like a travelogue kind of thing Are yeah you... it's another it's a kind of travel slash history thing um oh, fab. 
and so I'm busy doing that right now. But I don't, I don't like being idle. It's very, um, it's kind of annoying actually. Sometimes I find it very difficult to relax. Um, my my fiance is constantly complaining that uh, I'm try I'm always trying to do too much at, at one time. So, um, but you know, uh, my body gets a bit of a rest um, from from being sort of encased in armor for a ship for, for a start. Yeah. Is it latex? Is it is it proper armor? I know that Jamie Lannister had a rubber hand uh, for for a lot of his scenes back in Thrones. It was it was like a little flop. I, I went to the visited the prop store uh, over in uh, Titanic Studios and saw it there in like its in its like perspex case, right. never to be. T and they passed it to me, and I was expecting it to be heavy. It was just like a rubber glove. Just flopped it's around. Like a rubber glove. In me. Very disappointing. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't steel armor. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, it was, it wasn't that the weight and actually I have to applaud the costume department, um, and the armory department because they were brilliant, uh, with that stuff. It's not the weight. It's just that it's very unyielding. So, right. um, there, there's a tendency for it to just start to like dig into parts of your body that you didn't mm. know existed. Uh, and, um, we spoke to them early on, Kristen Cole, Mr. Frankel. Uh, was quite um, vocal in his uh, sort of pain that he was feeling. I mean, obviously, having done The Hobbit... These kids, eh? Yeah, these but, uh, I mean, kids. I said to him, listen, mate, try and wear a £70 costume and then complain. Uh, but, you know, he was like... This is just sticking in. So uh, they worked on weight distribution and everything, and they had a little detachable bit at the front so that we could sit down without looking like turtles... <laughs> um and and actually eat food uh yeah so they were very very accommodating so it wasn't nearly as uncomfortable as it looked um but i, I mean they they did an amazing job and the helmet the helmet when i had to wear the helmet very comfy very comfy indeed um so no complaints the sword was pretty heavy the sword was pretty heavy um and i i did have the biggest sword i'm just saying oh did you i did nice. Good. Yes, Dark uh, Sister Chris was a pale, pale imitation <laughs> of my gigantic blade. So um, uh, we used to have a great laugh, actually, me and Matt on set, Dark Sister. I mean, it just, it's a great name. I'm not knocking the name. It's a great name for a sword. But whenever he used to come on set, I would say, it's Dark Sister. <laughs> <laughs> and then we would sort of like... Um, come up with names for our swords. Uh, I can't remember what Paddy's was. It was absolutely hilarious, though. Amazing. Paddy was one of the funniest people on set. He's Wonderful. So good. He, yeah. he came on, he came on, the, he came in and spoke to us a few weeks ago. Yeah, he's oh, did he? Absolute blinding guy. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Dark brilliant. Sister does, Dark Sister does sound very kind of 70s Yeah, I think, rock. I think they should do it. It's like a band. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Sister. And then you can just hear that the boom, 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 boom coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of head shaking. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't know why. I don't know why my camera goes off and on. So, so Graham, one thing we were talking about when we've been watching the show every week is that we, because he's, uh, because your character is so studious and he's this good principal character, we don't know a lot about him because he's always at work. So. When when you kind of got the brief, when you were told you're playing him, what can you tell us about what you know about Harold that maybe we don't? I mean, has he been in the King's Guard a long time? Is he like an army an army bro? Like, what's the kind of what's the the story there? Well, I mean, the the, the discussion that Ryan Condal and I had before we started filming was that the King's Guard is a is, it's almost like a kind of warrior monk sort of brotherhood. So you get chosen to being the King's Guard and it's an enormous honor. But what goes with that is, is a lot of sacrifice. So um, as far as I understood, and this was how I played it, uh, he'd basically been in the King's Guard as an apprentice, probably since he was a, a teenager. Uh, he would have literally been uh, devoting his entire life to that family. I think Harold, well, he definitely served the previous king and possibly even the king before. Yeah. Um, and he's also one of the few 
that's had actual experience of war yeah. um, that we we decided. So uh, he has a background in proper warrior stuff, you know, badass going in there, uh, beating the crap out of people, um, sort of a guy. Um, and but but people who have that with them are always anticipating the next war. Uh, it's 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 like um, <clears throat> if you've if you've never experienced war, you never imagine it could ever happen. But I think if if you have, um, it's you just think it's only a matter of time <laughs> before it kicks yeah. off again. Uh, so he has that running through him. Um, they forsake uh, family, land. I think right titles. But there was the there was the moment, wasn't there, where it was either Eric or Derek, I forget that, where they, they they passed the crown to Rhaenyra in the in the finale, where the vows that, that that he kind of spoke when he was on his knees handing the crown it were very similar to to the uh, to the knights of, knights of the watch, yeah, um, yeah, uh, in Thrones, where it's, it's you're forsaking everything and doing your yeah. duty, you get yeah. the better deal because you get to at least kind of like walk around in a cloak in the hot sun, and the knights watch just just kind of basically just stand by a wall for. Well, for, for hundreds of years and freeze your nuts off. Um, <laughs> yes. It was interesting yes. you mentioned the 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 inevitable the inevitability of war because you know I think I mean luckily as a viewer we all know the dance of the dragons is coming and we always did know that there was always going to be a war. Mm. Do you think that everybody in the small council just knew there was a war and they, they were just putting it off as long as they could? Even Viserys kind of like was doing his best, but it was, you know, it, it was a bit, it's a bit like bailing out um, the Titanic with a thimble, isn't it really? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, there are lots of agendas at play with, with shows like this and that there will be people who will be working very hard to avoid war Um uh, you know, not discounting the possibility that it may, it may occur. And then there are people who are positively hopeful for war uh, for their own rather nefarious um, purposes, uh, Otto being that kind of an individual. Whereas, you know, the character that Bill Patterson played uh, was yeah. you know, very, very much about, you know, trying to avoid uh, any upset, keeping things on an even keel, just playing the safe hand, being calm, being very, very sort of Scots, actually. Well, that kind of Edinburgh Scot, who it's all about, just let's, let's just make sure the finances and this and that are all fine. Yeah. Um, but with, with regards to the war, um, I don't think they're warmongers in the, in the small council, possibly maybe Otto, but it's not that he, Otto wants war particularly. He just wants to realise his own ambitions for his family. Yeah. And and if that involves war, then fine. He's not going to flinch. Um, and that's... And, and also, I think, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. And they, they've been living in peace yeah. for so long. And it's, it, it's... And this is something that we can all relate to. I mean, even today that amongst some people there seems to be a, an almost perverse desire for war um and I, I actually can't wait to sort of like start bombing each other and um and i think there's an element of that in the small council that there are those that are barely held on the leash really um and you know i think significantly somebody like harold westerling as i say who has experienced war unlike these guys, um, wants to try and avoid it as much as possible. But when push comes to shove, those are the very kind of people you want yeah. leading you into, into battle. We've, yeah. we've kind of asked a couple of people who've been on the show uh, to tell us if there's been anything that they worked on that got cut for whatever reasons, because obviously you feel more than is able to fit in the episode. Were there any scenes that mm. you did with other characters that didn't make it into the episodes? Could you tell us a bit about that? No, I don't think so. There was in the scene where I um, in the in that that penultimate episode where I take the cloak off and all the rest of it. There was a little more with Chris. Right. Um, so there was more. There was more of a real confrontation. You know, it. it I, I pushed it. 
you know, in terms of dialogue wise, Harold, Harold really laid it out that basically you're scum. I think the line was, um, one of the lines was, uh, the rats of the Red Keep have more honour uh, than you. And, no, right. and really it was, it, was, it was the culmination of everything that he bottled up up till that point. All the things that he'd understood finally about Kristen and he wanted to tell them. And of course, as an actor, you know, you want that to be in the show because it's, yeah, of it's course, a yeah. great, it's, cool moment. It's the show reel. But yeah, exactly. At, at the same time, uh, actually, I understand why it's not in there because if, I ha if he had said those things to Kristen, I think it would have escalated. Yeah. I don't think Kristen being the kind of hair trigger kind of a guy that he is would have put up with basically being told that he was utter scum. Um, and I think that would have, it, you would have suddenly had a, a, a sword fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas Alison's interjection at the point that it comes in actually made more sense. And, and the way it plays in the scene, you can see that both Kristen and I are quite happy to have a fight if necessary, but, you know, um, cooler heads prevail. Mm. And that's, and that's when, you know, we sheathe our swords. But, uh, yeah, that was an interesting bit that we didn't include yeah. in the end. Are you, are you up to speed on, on, on the books? Do you know what, do you know what the outcome of, uh, do you know what Sir Harold's fate is at all? No, I don't. I'm not, not that we're going to discuss it. No, uh, I just wondered if no, no. Well, I mean, I think my, my understanding anyway is that Harold. Don't tell me, <laughs> don't, tell, don't, don't spoil it for me. I don't, want, don't you dare spoil it for oh, me. Oh, no, 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 I mean, I mean, in the books. Oh, in the books, but uh, I won't, no, I won't no, say anything. No, 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 no well, we can't. I, 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 I don't even want to know what happens in the books. I'll, no, we'll, no, we'll, no we'll fair debate. enough. For oh, goodness me, fair enough. I tell you, I tell you, I only, I only say that because you mentioned about the rats, and we, we, we picked oh, yeah. up on the rats yeah. as this, this, this kind true. of moat, this kind of motif, this kind of motif that came that that seemed to be being planted throughout the. Um, There's a lot of yeah, a lot, particularly when Viserys was getting iller and iller. There was a lot of shots of rats around his room. Well, the thing is, I. I heard, I heard that there's like a, that there is like a red wedding-y kind of moment um, oh, really? in, in, a, in however many seasons time that the, oh. that, that the rats eating the blood is like a major Ooh. kind of foreshadowing okay. of Ooh. some, um, some, some nice. huge kind of twist shock kind of thing that's coming your way. So nice. what I'm Very. saying to you, Graham, is watch out for the rats, mate, because <laughs> yeah, that, if you know, I see one scurrying yeah. around. Like, well, well, you're, always, you're always standing up, so you'll be first out the door, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe he's not so stupid after all. Yeah. I was just going to say really quickly, like, it's really impressive to see Harold quit on principle because that episode where he does quit is where we see that very few people in that room have any principles and they are willing to usurp the throne. It's amazing that he identifies that Rhaenyra is the rightful heir and chooses to get out. I mean, do you do you understand whether he's going to be finding Rhaenyra or is do you think he's going to be rallying support or is that kind of speculation stuff that you don't really bother engaging with until you're on set? I, it's difficult to speculate about that. I mean, I think what I loved about that was that it was, um, you're, you're absolutely right that, that really he exists in a nest of vipers, uh, Harold. You know, these are backstabbing, you know, venal, yeah. sort of ambitious, whatever you want to call them, individuals. Uh, and, you know, they've all, got, they've all got their own agendas, whereas Harold really doesn't have an agenda. Uh, and I think that's very important from a story point of view, that if, if it's just about one sort of uh, morally dubious character after another, uh, it's it's important to actually anchor that kind of a world and have at least one person representing, you know, m moral dignity and honour. Uh, the very fact that he does take his cloak off and, and walks away. He wouldn't have... I mean, I take a moment to do it in the show because it's a big deal and surrendering a cloak would have been enormously painful for him. But I don't think mentally he would have hesitated for a minute that mm. there was no choice as far as he was concerned. This was this was a line that they had crossed that was completely, you know, unpardonable. Uh, and he couldn't, in good conscience, yeah. be a part of it. And that's, and it's, and, I mean, 
my goodness me, I mean, even you know, nowadays it's difficult enough to find people yeah. of honour um, in political life and, and public life. But in this show, uh, you know, he, he does represent somebody who is a straight arrow, somebody with a strong moral compass, um, and somebody who cares mm. about people, about the people that he has been entrusted to serve. And, and that's, um, it's quite an old fashioned concept, um, you know, that a life of service, uh, you know, some, somebody who represented it recently, of course, is our, our late queen, yeah. you know, who devoted her life to, to a, a nation and to a commonwealth. And that's such an unusual thing. Um, and um, I'm, I'm not comparing myself with the Queen, but uh, he, he's well, somebody I think you are. It's fine. That That's tradition. fine. You are. Yeah. He's somebody from that tradition uh, yeah. that, that actually believes in right and wrong and um, standing up for his principles, which is fabulous. That's always the rule in, in, in George's world is always look for the, that there will always be someone trying to help. And, you know, there's that saying is there in times of a crisis, there will always be someone there trying to help running in the opposite mm. direction. Yeah, right. And so Harold is that guy and he's the only guy there at the moment that is, yeah. that is seemingly trying to do that or someone yeah. in King's Landing that's trying to do that. Um, yeah. What how, do you, do you, I mean, not that we would ask you to divulge anything, but do you, any, have you, have you been in touch about season two? Is it on the horizon? Are you limbering up? Are you, are you starting to kind of like bench pressing, uh, yeah. <laughs> bench pressing, prepping yourself for, prepping yourself for the aluminium armor again? I'm what's, always what's ready. Course? I'm always ready. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I can't like talk really anything about, sure. you know, season two or whatever, but, yeah. um, you know, I'm having, I'm having, uh, dinner with Ryan soon and um, I'm sure we'll have a lovely chat but uh, it's um yeah it, it, it's so difficult nowadays in the in the world that we live in in television that is it what you expected it you, you know because obviously Game of Thrones now comes with a whole lot of baggage and yeah. an expectation and you must have had that in the back of your mind uh, when you accepted the gig is it is it how you imagined it to be yeah it's it I mean I you know I had a bit of I've had a bit of practice with the Hobbit and Exactly. You know, with, yeah. With with Outlander, um, particularly those uh, that there is a big kind of fan expectation. There's a big fan involvement in that world, uh, but it still takes you by surprise. It, it does. It does. You know, I was I've been to you know people have come up to me to talk about the show and talk about Harold and the the world of uh, House of the Dragon, and uh, I I think it's I saw an amazing video. I think it was on the premiere evening, the premiere night. And it was in an apartment building. You may have seen it in New York. And you could yeah. see in the yeah, oh, with yeah, all the yeah. lights. Yeah. yeah. That's and it, everybody yeah. was watching the show. Amazing. And and that really does bring home because you can't conceive of that. And it's a good thing you can't. Uh, because I mean you'd never you'd never step out of your door to to work if you felt that kind of pressure. So uh, you know, in terms of shows like this. And it was the same with The Hobbit, the same with Outlander and all the rest of it. You're working very much, not just in the moment, but you're working in a little bit of a bubble. And the 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 business end of making shows like this is very, very, very small. So, you know, you'd literally be, you know, me, Reese, Matt, Paddy. You know, there's groups of people talking to each other as actors or interacting with a very small number of people around them. And so you don't, you've got the sets and the costumes and all the rest of it, but that almost fades into the background actually, mm. because really what you're concentrating on is what's happening right in front of your face. And that's, that's definitely how it should be. You mustn't walk onto a set like House of the Dragon thinking, Oh, oh no, they're all, they're all waiting. What's it, will they like what I'm going to do? Should I be standing like this? Should I have the helmet on? Should I take it off? Um, so yeah, you have. That to is puzzle. exactly how I in my in my kind of like oh no I've I've walked into school assembly naked nightmares that I have I am walking into the to the to the throne room and and to to to, to do some <laughs> acting and kind of thinking holy shit I'm going to be dreadful it oh, would be oh well, my but God. believe me all actors have those nightmares. Is there anyone in the wider yeah. cast that you haven't got to work with as much that you're looking forward to working with? whether it's next year, season three, whatever, anyone that you just weren't able to play against that you'd like to see more of next year? Oh, gosh. Well, the 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 new, um, well, yeah. Egon, uh, uh, 
I mean, I had nothing to do with the older version. In fact, the, the older version of the cast, apart from uh, Rhaenyra and Millicent, uh, and Alison, sorry, um, I didn't really have any interaction with at all. So there was a real separation. Um, who else? I mean, I'd like to do more with people, um, you know, the, the, the other mm. families that, that aren't necessarily... I mean, I think that's one of the interesting things about this you know whatever happens next the world of house of the dragon is going to expand yeah and uh there it's it's almost going to be a little more like the original show in that i think there will be multiple storylines multiple locations yeah. happening yeah i think that's that seems to be definitely where it's leading because we're, we're going into a kind of yeah. civil war i was surprised I would be surprised if you hadn't been asked to be in the original Thrones. Did you have any conversations around that initially? Were you approached with any parts? Mm. In, in the original? Mm. Um, well, yeah, the problem there was that I was never right. available. Um, so I was doing The Hobbit when it began, right? Uh, pretty much, sure. I think. Yeah, I was doing The Hobbit, and then I went straight on to Outlander for another two and a half years. And then I went straight from that to Preacher for four years. Yeah. And, and it just, it, it really kind of um, covered that period pretty much. And um, so no, sadly, I was always hoping that it could work out. But the lovely thing was that the conversation I had with Ryan, um, I had, gosh, it's got to be at least five years ago about this. Wow. Really? Oh, wow. Um, well, he... Yeah, well, he, he was, um, I did a pilot with Ryan for a show called The Sixth Gun, which was based on a, a series of comics um, for NBC. And that didn't get picked up, but Ryan and I stayed friends. And I also, I subsequently worked with Ryan on Colony, which was another show that he was showrunner on. So um, he, he likes working with me. And we met for lunch in L.A., and he explained to me that, and he'd become friends with George when we were in Santa Fe during right. the Sixth Gun. He'd sort him out, right. really, and, and sort of gone, you know, I love, because he's a yeah, huge yeah. fan, Ryan. Amazing. Um, and, and that set in motion his, his ambition to actually write the, the prequel to it. And I know at one time there were a couple of other possibilities, but I think Ryan's was always the strongest and I know George really supported Ryan's uh, vision. And, and, and Ryan spoke to me about it in a, at lunch five years ago, probably, and said, you know, um, when this happens, I'd really like you to be involved in it. And I was like, oh, absolutely. yes, please. Yes. 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 And, um, and I remember standing with him in the throne room, I think the first time we shot on that set, and we were looking up at these giant statues and looking at the Iron Throne. And I just said, can you believe it? This has actually happened. It actually that, worked. Yeah. That something oh. that you imagined in your head that you wanted to accomplish has now come to fruition. And here we are standing together. I'm in a suit of armor and <laughs> off we go. And it's an, it was an amazing moment. I remind him of it whenever I speak to him, actually. Especially in TV land, the amount of, you know, the amount of, uh, pilot graveyard oh. <laughs> that we live yeah, in. No, right? it's, it's, it's a fantastic uh, success story. Uh, oh, for, for, right. You know, and that it, it most certainly is because, you know, as we've, as Chris and I have said to everyone we've met from the show, what a relief, what a joy, <laughs> what a, what a fantastic thing. We cannot, we cannot wait to, to, to see what you guys have got, have got lined uh, up for us brilliant. over the coming years. Uh, brilliant. Graham, we really appreciate your time. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming on. My and, pleasure. Uh, Good Thanks, luck with guys. season two, whatever whatever the future may hold. Uh, rooting Graham. for you, be rooting and, for you in season two. All right, buddy. <laughs> uh, it was wonderful. Thank you so much to uh, again to um, HBO to Premier uh, and everybody for, for for putting us in touch with with Graham. Hopefully, not the last cast member that we speak to uh, between now and uh, and season two, but they um, they're all. I think they're all taking a well earned break, or as Graham pointed out. It was Graham pointed out, enjoying working on something else. <laughs> yes. Washing their hair after gluing those wigs in for so long. Um, yeah. Do you know who I'd love actually to speak to, for either in the interim or for season two, is the guy that plays the twin Lannisters. One of them is on the small council. You know the guy that was like chirps in on Rhaenyra on like the boar hunt? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So he plays two Lannisters, um, but he was also in... I, can't I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, as in, like, a, a bit like uh, Army Hammer did. Yeah. He's doing a Winkle Boss. Oh. Let's, let, so he plays... So the, the Lannister that's in the Small Council and the one that was trying to marry Rhaenyra are brothers. Right. One of them oh, is the, I thought that was... I well, I mean, I don't think they m- really make it clear, but one of them is the heir to Casterly Rock, and one of them is like the master of coin or whatever. Um, right. But okay. no, obviously they're played by the same actor. What is even more amazing is that that guy was in Game of Thrones in season one. Yes. We think we talked about it at the time. The yeah, only time, he, uh... the only time they just went, yeah, you know, you can come back and play someone else. Mate, they didn't notice. Really? He kn- <sighs> He knew, <laughs> and he was honestly. This is the this is the truth. As far this is the truth as I understand it. That was that has been told to me, was that he knew, kept his head down. Oh, my God, and they so no funny. one literally no one checked. Just can you imagine like standing what on set? I'd be shitting myself like, like any minute now. It'd be like the end of Argo every single day. <laughs> <laughs> so he's played by Jefferson Hall. If you're Good listening, Jefferson, well. come on the podcast. Tell us how you pulled off the scam of the century. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the results uh, of the season yeah. one poll, shall we? We are going to be recovering um, old ground in terms of Game of Thrones. We're not going to do an episode by episode um, uh, watch back because life's too short. You know, it's a cost of living crisis, mate. Um, but what we are going to do is go back and look at three key episodes for each season of Game of Thrones. And I think we'll do one each week. Um, so this week, let me see. I've not even checked the results. Did you vote yourself, Chris? I did. I voted straight away. <laughs> and I might have taken a peek at the answers this morning. Just... Well, the results are in. Okay. In um, in reverse order. Wow. Um, no one liked episode five much. The Wolf and the Lion. That came last. Then it was episode two. Uh, the King's Road. Um, uh, then we had uh, episode three, Lord Snow. Uh, mm-hmm. That was just a lot of faffing around at the wall, I think. A lot of establishing right, new characters. That was when Benjamin went missing, wasn't it? I, I think, think so, yeah. 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 And it, yeah. Then we had uh, the pointy end. Again, nothing jumps out at me in terms of that. Then, uh, surprisingly, came uh, episode 10, Fire and Blood. So way off the mark. Then we had a joint fourth and fifth Um is uh, episode six, A Golden Crown, and episode seven, You Win or You Die. So the three that we're going to cover, kind of not, I think, so would, are we doing them in chronological order or vote order? We'll have to, I, I think, think probably we should chronological do them chronologically order. because stuff in okay. later ones will be informed by what we've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, episode one, Winter is Coming, even though we discussed why we didn't want to do the pilot episode <laughs> that's what we were doing the pilot episode that's the first one that got 38 percent of the votes um then episode four uh cripples bastards what's the full title cripples uh, bastards and broken things that was it yeah i can't remember what happens in that one off the well, top it of my culminates head. with catelyn stark arresting Tyrion in the in the in. Okay. she thinks gotcha. he attacked Bran, and it is interesting in that regard because that is what the misunderstanding kicks off the whole Another, war yeah um and it is a, right. a misunderstanding involving that bloody knife because that's the yeah the cat's paw dagger yet again yeah i may have to get a picture of the cat's paw dagger somewhere it's it's become like a MacGuffin of, of yeah. modern cinema yeah. um and then uh to nobody else's nobody's surprise including our own uh episode nine Baylor. Uh, will mm-hmm. be the final one that we discuss uh, from season one. So next week, uh, Chris, uh, are we going to do a watch along or are we just going to discuss it? What do you great feel? Great like? idea. I think we should watch them set yeah. in our own time. And I think we should do yeah. a Twitter spaces with people that are listeners to see if they want to like share yeah. their thoughts. So that'll come up as a bonus episode within the next week or so we're still trying to get into a groove of yeah very interesting results on the poll so we've got the first episode of the season the last episode of the season and then we've got episode four no we haven't got the last episode of the season sorry i meant sorry we've got the first episode of the season we've got episode nine where yeah. ned loses his head and then in between that we've got episode four which i don't remember being a particularly like 
fast paced no. episode. Um, but you know, I also think <clears throat> I just want to give a shout out to the second episode of season one, which is the one with all the drama where Arya's wolf bites Joffrey. And oh, then they yeah, yeah, kill yeah, yeah. Sansa's wolf as a sort of penance. And I think it's a very good episode. Yeah. I think we talked about this last week, but pilots are really hard work. But often with, yeah. with most shows, the second episode is where you get, okay, we've set all this up. We're going to like have some fun. And episode two is a great episode of just seeing how fucked up the politics are, the sacrifices that everyone is going to have to make and all the foreshadowing yeah. about how toxic this whole setup is. Um, so if people are doing a rewatch um, for the whole season and you see episode two, let us know, because I think it's great. But yeah, we'll yeah. do one, four, nine, which I think is is a really, yeah. a really good, good intro episode. to Joffrey as well. Episode two is really good. Yeah, in, yeah. In also, I think I just think looking at the pilot, uh, looking at the first episode, seeing everything, I think it'll be kind of really interesting because it's a you don't have this with House of the Dragon, but Game of Thrones has three completely unrelated storylines for most of its run. Like you have the fighting with all the families, the stuff yep. north of the wall, which for most of the show feels completely irrelevant. And you also have yep. Daenerys, who doesn't meet any of the other cast for quite a long time. So yep. that's a lot for a pilot when you think House of the Dragon has been quite streamlined and it's been quite, mm. this is what it's about. Um, yeah, so yeah, really looking, really looking forward to that. So we'll do episode one next week. Next week. Perfect. Can't wait. Um, and then separately, are we doing this right? I tell you, I'm going to defer um, to my podcast wife, Chris Mandel. Um, <laughs> what, what are we... It's weird how I've, I've assumed the husband position there. Are you okay with that? Absolutely fine. Just keep me sweet. And, uh, and yeah, I'll have your dinner on the table at six. <laughs> fine. Thank you very much. Um, explain to me uh, and the listeners how we're going to tackle the Americans. Okay. Uh, it, it all of a sudden feels a lot more daunting than I was expecting it. To yes, be. yes. So, it's right. uh, talk us through it. Are, so, we doing this, are we doing this as bonus episodes? I think probably that's a good question. Well, let's just let's just do. I, mean, I feel like Carol Vorderman on Countdown with my big marker pen. Let's yeah. just break this down. So we're going to do three episodes okay. a season of Game of Thrones. Yeah. So there are eight seasons. Three times eight is twenty-four. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Good maths, good maths. I have GCSE in maths and I'm not afraid to use it. So we've got 24, 24 episodes. We maybe will do, maybe we'll cut, maybe we don't need three episodes of season seven and eight because those are shorter. Um, yeah. So then that's going to take us through to, I mean, that's going to take <clears throat> quite a while. I, you know, I think the Americans we should do as a bonus thing and we should run a similar sort of structure, but the Americans is six seasons for a total of 75 episodes so we can't really do it episode by episode because it will take a year so what i think we should do and look we're all getting older <laughs> some some older than others but you've got this new hd camera and i would argue you look younger than me in that flattering light <laughs> yeah, a, so what i think I for the americans people we should do a similar sort of structure I think we should watch all of it, but I think we should cover it in three, like, chunks. We should do it a third at a time. So we'll do okay. three episodes per season. That's 18 episodes total. That feels But that feels we will better. watch, feels... like, episode one to four, discuss them. We'll watch yeah. five to eight, discuss them. Nine and ten, and then a reflection. I think that is a good way to do it, because we have other commitments outside of the podcast and yeah, also um, we, yeah, it, it's, I mean, we don't really know um, what we're getting ourselves in for. Uh, at this no, point. exactly. And you know what we might, I'm not, I don't think we will. Cause I think we've chosen wisely. We might not even like it, but let's see. How Can we you go. imagine if we started it and we were like, what a load of shit. It's interesting though. I think, you know, <clears throat> shows take a long time to get into. And I think um, I remember finding Mad Men, Quite painful to watch at first because I was really late to Mad Men, um, and I now think it's one of the best shows ever made. I think it takes a minute, so yeah, that'll be helpful. We'll watch four, we'll reflect on it, and that's that's the way we'll great because I'm I can't wait to start watching it. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. So that's me too. Be, um, really excited for the Thrones rewatch as well. Um, yeah, and then we have Succession in the spring, so we're going to be very busy. Oh, 
They were. But you know what? It's not work, is it? It's not work, is it? No. Is, well, according to the man, tax man, this is a proper treat. According to the tax man, it is work. Um, and if he's if he is listening, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, this and... HD camera is expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what a fun thing to do! What a great thing to do! And we've had so yeah. many nice messages from our listeners this we last have. week. Just checking in. We've had loads. In fact, we got a few um, emails through. Um, oh, uh, Car- thank you to Carla Papas. Um, who I, th- I, th- I think from um uh i think they're they're portuguese uh saying you guys should visit our little towns of Mons- monsanto and pena garcia in portugal episodes 10 of house of dragon was shot there and huh. it's beautiful so there we go another one to another one to add on our worldwide i wonder which part of episode 10 yeah which which part of that were there any external shots that were kind of sunny I don't think there were, were there? Maybe. I thought all the Dragonstone stuff was done in Cornwall. Yeah, maybe. What about um, where? Where? What about um, the Baratheon? Um, oh, maybe. Place. Maybe. Maybe that. maybe that. That would make sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ca. Thank you, Claire. Uh, got in touch. Thank you, Claire. Saying it'd be good for you to rewatch House of Dragons episode by episode and redigest with hindsight. Thanks for the email. Absolutely not. Well, I think later, I think yes. I think what we may do is do it is do a bit of a recap building into season two. Mm. I think would be would be probably the best way of doing that. Yeah, I'd be. In, I'm definitely interested. I mean, it's funny because we just through the course of our jobs and other commitments, we've. I mean, I think I've watched every episode two or three times. <laughs> I'm a bit like done in, but yeah, I've kind of already done. Yeah, you know what's exactly, interesting with exactly. Thrones? Uh, I think I watched sort of at least the first two thirds of it. I must have watched it four or five times i was always re-watching it because it was always on the sky, on sky at like 11 p.m and if ever i was like back up seeing my parents i'd just watch a couple of episodes um and i would always yeah i just on it's always on it's literally on probably on tonight on sky atlantic i, I will be 100%. like two, just two episodes from season three um and yeah i've watched game of thrones a lot um just through sheer force of will and maybe the same will be true of house of the dragon maybe Late next year, we might end up doing a little mini cluster of episodes. Yeah. Intriguing. That would be good. Um, that would be good. Listen, Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure again, my friend. Always, always. Um, see you next week when we've got uh, uh, when we've watched uh, episode one of, of yeah, Thrones of and Thrones. four episodes of uh, of the Americans. Amazing. What a lot of work to do. So we'll do. We'll put something on our Twitter, which is just what time we'll do a Twitter space to talk about the Game yes. of Thrones premiere. And 100%. yeah, lovely stuff. Well, have a good week. Yeah, and... you too. You too. Have a good week. Thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to spread the Dragoncast love and tell your friends about it and like-minded people. If uh, if anyone has been annoying you to watch the Americans and you want to jump on board with us, we would love to have you along for the ride and do join us on Twitter spaces for our, uh, our, our talk through of uh, season, uh, season one, episode one of Game of Thrones. Until next week, you've been listening to Dragoncast. I'm Jamie East and this is Chris Mandel. Dracaris. Dracaris. <laughs>